Hi, in this video we're using Substance 3D Designer to create different crack setups. Let's go over the key nodes and parameters we'll use first. The cross section node draws a cross sectional profile of an input image. It can be used to visualize 2D shapes, silhouettes, curve profiles, profile lines, and more. With height scale, you define the height of the visualization. Height offset shifts the visualization up or down. Use drawing style to switch between different styles, from filled shapes over gradients to solid lines. A high pass grayscale node gets rid of large luminance differences but keeps the details. Radius defines the area size for the differences to remove. The smaller it is, more details get removed too. The bevel node performs an edge beveling effect on a high contrast input image. Distance adjusts the bevel effect range. The smoothing parameter controls the blur intensity which is added after the beveling effect. Let's build this basic crack setup together. You can then use it as base for more complex crack effects and material setups. Making cracks consists of two major steps. First we build a shape and get the high contrast masks from it. Then we add detail filters to make it more believable. For this quick tip example we start with the crystal 1 node and adjust the scale to 2. Adjusting the tiling mode to horizontal tiling is needed to get rid of vertical tiling. We connect it to a cross section node to extract the cross sectional profile. For a nice gradient line we switch the drawing style to gradient mirrored. Let's adjust the height offset to get the line in place. Now we break up the lines more with non-uniform directional warp node. As intensity input we'll use the crystal 1 node. We increased intensity to 50 for a stronger effect. Here we connect it to a high pass grayscale node to remove large luminance differences. To keep smaller details we increase the radius to 4.8. We use a threshold node to quickly turn the soft grayscale shape into a hard white mask and increase the threshold to 0.507. To transform the crack we take a transformation 2D node, adjust the tiling mode to no tiling and scale it slightly while holding shift control. For a bevel effect we use the bevel node and adjust the distance to minus 0.02. To apply details to the crack we'll use a slope blur grayscale node. Let's connect the clouds 2 node with a scale of 4 into the slope input of the slope blur node to see the effect. Increase the samples to 32 for a higher quality and adjust the intensity to 0.1 for a less strong effect. Here's our final base result of the setup we did before. You can save this setup and use it in another project or make a custom node out of it. This will speed up your workflow a lot. Let's dive into some variations and examples of this tip. I use a multi-directional warp grayscale node to add additional details to the crack shape. Play around with different modes and intensities for nice variations and different looks. As intensity input I utilize a purlin noise followed by a levels node for contrast and lightness adjustments. The radius of the high pass grayscale node gives me the control over the crack thickness. To bring in smaller micro details to the cracks I add another multi-directional warp grayscale node and blend it together with the already existing slope blur effect. This gives me a lot of control over the effect by adjusting the opacity and using different blending modes. For the base of a crack pattern I use the tile generator node to get a lot of control. The pixel size mode is nice in combination with a distance node to get the cell pattern. Then I take the edge detect node to get lines from it. Break up and details process is the same here and for the single crack. To get the really base surface material I warped the fractal sum base node with a clouds 1 node. Then I subtracted the cracks from it. This result I used to connect to the most important outputs for a metallic roughness workflow setup. If you want to learn more you can download and open the graphs shown in the video. Thanks for watching and we would love to hear your thoughts, ideas and suggestions for future quick tips. So let us know them in the comments. See you in the next quick tip episode.